What's up slackers? Welcome to Book Cheats. Today we'll be talking about To Kill a Mockingbird Chapter 6. So at the beginning of the chapter, it's the last day of summer break for Dill, Jem, and Scout. This would be the last day that Jem and Scout would see Dill because Dill was heading back to Mississippi to live with his mom again. Jem and Scout asked their father Atticus if they could go over to Dill's house to say goodbye. Atticus said that was totally fine and they headed over to Dill's house. When they got to Dill's house, Dill was rolling a cigarette out of newspapers to look cool or something. Jem and Scout told him not to light it because it would stink up the whole town. Scout told Dill that she would miss him, and Scout suggested that the three of them wait and watch across the street for a guy named Mr. Avery. Mr. Avery was one of their neighbors who had a really unusual habit of sitting on his porch until 9 p.m. every day and sneezing a ton. Also, one time they caught Mr. Avery peeing off his porch, and the two boys were really impressed with how far his stream was. Oftentimes they would watch him to see if he did it again, just because they were impressed with how far he could pee. After getting bored watching Mr. Avery because he didn't do anything, Dill suggested that the three of them walk down by the light post by Boo Radley's house. Scout complained about doing this because she was scared of Boo Radley, but she eventually went with them anyway. The three of them walked down to the light post, and when they got there, Jem told Scout that she should probably go home. Scout asked them what they were going to do and why she should go home. Jem told Scout that they were going to sneak into the Boo Radley's yard because one of their shutters was loose, and they were going to look in the window to see if they could see Boo Radley. Scout again was completely triggered by fear. Scout tried and tried to get them not to go into the Boo Radley's yard, but after they called her a scared girl, she knew she had to go with them. They decided to go in from the backyard because less people would be able to see them. The three of them snuck around the backyard. Scout wondered why they had waited until nighttime to do this, but then she realized that they had the cover of night, and that their father Atticus would be deep reading a book, and that it would be a lot easier to see into a house, and the people in the house wouldn't be able to see outside as well. They decided to sneak in from the back because because that was their best chance of not being seen, and the three of them sprinted over to the back of the yard. Around the back lot of the Radley's house was a barbed wire fence. Jem lifted up the barbed wire fence, and Dill and Scout snuck underneath. Jem followed them after they both got through, and they quietly walked through the yard. Past the barbed wire fence was a gate with the picket fence around the house. Scout said that she was so scared walking around the house that she would fall really far behind Jem and Dill because she was walking so slow, and Jem and Dill would have to wait for her to catch up. When they got to the gate, Jem tried to open the gate and the gate squeaked. Dill told them that they had to spit on the gate so that it wouldn't squeak and the three of them quietly unloaded all their saliva until their mouths were dry. They quietly opened the gate and it didn't make a sound and they snuck to the side of the house with the loose shutters. The three had determined that they would lift up Dill to the window because he was the lightest of the three. Scout and Jem lifted up Dill and Dill looked into the window. When they started to get tired, Dill patted their shoulders to signal them to lift him down and Jem asked Dill what he saw. Dill said that he couldn't see anything because there were curtains in the window, but he said that he could see a light on the other side of the house. Jem said that they should probably go when Dill said that they were so close they should just go to the other side of the house. Scout was about to complain. Jem and Dill shush Scout. I, I'm just, we, we, knock, knock. Who's there? Shh so that she couldn't say anything. The three of them headed to the back of the house, and Jem decided to be the brave one. Around the outside of the property was a porch that surrounded most of the house. Jem tried to sneak onto the porch, but the wood on the porch was extremely creaky. So he slowly lifted himself onto the porch, being careful not to touch any wood panels that would creak, and he crawled to the window on the other side of the house. Jem poked his head above into the window, and Scout was the first one to see it. Scout saw a shadow starting to walk towards Jem. Eventually, Dill and Jem saw the shadow too. The shadow stopped hovering over Jem, and Jem froze in fear and covered his head. The shadow stopped and turned and walked the other way. As soon as the shadow was out of sight, Jem sprinted off the porch, and the three of them ran back towards the barbed wire fence. As they were sprinting, back towards the fence, Scout tripped, and the three of them heard a shotgun blast go off. 
Jem and Dill dive towards the ground, and they hurriedly went towards the barbed wire fence. Jem lifted up the barbed wire fence so Scout and Dill could escape, and Scout and Dill sprinted off. When Scout and Dill were a far enough distance away, they looked back and realized that Jem wasn't with them. Summoning all the bravery they could, they sprinted back to save their comrade. When they got back to the fence, they found Jem underneath the fence, and his pants had gotten caught in the barbs of the barbed wire. Jem hurriedly took off his pants, and they ran towards the oak tree just outside the Radley's property. After catching their breaths there for a minute, they decided to casually walk home, going the back way so they could jump the back fence of their property. They got back and snuck into the house, and they looked down the street, and all the townspeople were outside the Radley's house talking to Nathan Radley, Boo Radley's brother, and the three kids decided to go down to act inconspicuous so that they didn't seem guilty. They walked down pretending to see what all the commotion was about. When they got down to the Radley's house, where all the rest of the people were at, Miss Rachel filled them in on what happened. She said that Nathan said that he shot in the air at a black man who was sneaking in his yard. Oh, hell no! <laughs> Miss Rachel, kind of suspecting what really happened, said that the next time Mr. Radley found someone in his yard, he didn't care what it was, whether it be a dog, a black guy, or even Jem Finch, he would shoot him. Atticus looked over and saw that Jem was just in his underwear and asked him where his pants was. Dill thought fast and, and told Atticus that he had won Jem's pants in a poker match. All the people of the town seemed kind of satisfied with this answer, but Atticus was shocked. He asked them if they were playing with cards and Jem jumped in and said that they were playing with matches. Jem knew that if his father found out that they were playing with cards, they would be in bigger trouble. Atticus told Dill and Jem to settle things and for Dill to give Jem's pants back. The three of them, Scout, Jem, and Dill, walked back to the house and they were trying to figure out how to get Jem some pants. They knew that Jem wouldn't be able to fit in Dill's pants and so because Dill was leaving the next day, Dill wasn't too worried about it because he wouldn't be in trouble. When they got back to the house, they said their final goodbyes to Dill. Dill must have remembered that he proposed to Scout because as he was saying goodbye, he leaned in and kissed Scout right on the lips. And they went to bed. That night, Scout couldn't sleep at all. Every sound she heard, she thought it was Boo Radley coming into their house trying to get revenge. Eventually, after a couple hours of her rustling around trying to sleep, Jem, being awake too, asked Scout if she could sleep. Jem told Scout that he was going back to get his pants. Scout was immediately filled with fear, and she pleaded with Jem not to go back to the house. Scout told Jem that she was going to go downstairs right there and tell their father what Jem was going to try to do. Scout told Jem that the next morning, Nathan would find his pants, and that Jem would just be in a little bit of trouble. But if Jem went there tonight, he'd get his head shot off and that being in trouble was a lot better than being dead. Jem told Scout that if she told their father that he'd kill her. Scout after pleading with him and eventually offering to go with him, she eventually gave in and she let Jem go off on his own to find his pants. As she sat there waiting for Jem, she listened to see if Atticus would wake up to catch him and she also listened to hear if she heard a shotgun shooting her brother. After some time, she heard Jem come up the stairs, and she squinted and saw Jem, and he had his pants back. Jem seemed to be trembling with fear, and he quickly went to bed and fell asleep. And that concludes the chapter. Thanks so much for watching Book Cheats. Please leave that like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments from your homework, please leave a comment down below. You guys have an awesome day, and slack on. Bye. Bye. Bye.